Well, the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants continue to drive COVID cases here in the Bay Area and across the U.S. The CDC says they currently make up 95 percent of cases. Joining me now is Dr. Neha Narula with Stanford HealthCare. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So let's just start off with some symptoms used to include loss of smell and taste. Is that still the case with the latest Omicron variants? So unfortunately, no. Um, uh, the symptoms of loss of smell, loss of taste were really used as um, a, a marker for people to know, hey, I might have an infection. And this was what we were seeing with earlier strains of coronavirus. This unfortunately is not as prominent with these newer strains. Rather, we're seeing symptoms that are very similar to what we see with the flu. And um, these are based off of studies that are coming from the UK and early data from the US. And anecdotally, I can attest to this as well with patients I've seen this past month. We are seeing symptoms like body aches, muscle aches, fatigue, um, abdominal pain, fever. And in addition, we're seeing more upper respiratory symptoms such as runny nose, nasal congestion, sinus congestion. And then oddly, a painful, nasty sore throat is becoming a, a bit more common with these newer strains. A cough can come later uh, during the week and potentially stay a couple of weeks after you're infected. Um, but this is what we're seeing a little bit more with these new strains. Um, as always, we're continuing to learn and we'll keep you updated as we know more. Gotcha. So it's like a whole mixed bag of like flu, fever, cold symptoms, <laughs> really be anything. Um, if someone gets COVID, how long do they have immunity from the virus considering all the Omicron variants? Oh, yes. So um, with Delta and the earlier coronavirus strains, reinfection really wasn't as common as we're seeing now. And studies on, on those variants um, did show that immunity after infection would last three to four months. But since Omicron has come into the picture, everything has changed. Um, the newer variants have acquired so many mutations um, in that spike protein that these newer versions are more contagious and are better at evading our immune system. Um, such that if you've had an infection earlier this year with Omicron, you can still get reinfected as early as 20 to 28 days after your infection. And, and this is these numbers are based off of studies that are coming from Denmark and Australia. They are in preprint, pre and um, they have yet to be peer reviewed. But this is unfortunately something we're seeing anecdotally here in the U.S. as well. Now, the good news, uh, uh, the good news is that our body um, does have an immune response beyond the antibody response with T cells and B cells that can squash these reinfections. Um, so it is important to be up to date with those vaccines and boosters so that we have up to date immunity um, to squash these reinfections. <laughs> Got it. So the FDA says both Moderna and Pfizer are working on those booster shots that specifically target Omicron variants and that they should be available by September. So if you're eligible to get a booster, should you get one now or wait until those other booster shots are available? What yeah, you fantastic question. This is something I'm getting a lot of questions about in clinic as well. Um, so, you know, as we just mentioned, the vaccines elicit not just an antibody response, but a cellular response. Um, to simply put it, antibodies basically prevent the virus from spreading within our body. And should that fail, our T cells then prevent further damage. That's where they come into action. Um, even though these variants have evolved and the antibodies aren't working as um, strongly as before, the T cells are not affected by this. But what we do know is after six or seven months um, from your prior vaccine, these both of these responses will wane. So given that we are currently in the summer surge, and if you have not gotten a booster in the six, seven months, um, in the past six, seven months, and you are eligible for your first or second booster, we're urging everyone to get these boosters now. And, and you can still get these new ones coming up this fall, but to protect yourself now, it's important to, to stay up to date and get these boosters currently. And if you keep testing positive for COVID, when can you stop isolating? A lot of people keep testing and testing and testing yeah. and not getting those yeah. results that they need. Um, this is, you saved the hardest question for last. Um, the answer is a bit complicated, unfortunately, and a bit confusing. So at this time, we don't have any perfect tests or studies that show how likely it is for a positive test to translate to how much virus is being shed by a person. At this time, um, we will continue to recommend what the CDC recommends, um, which is if by day five after your initial test or your symptoms start, if you are asymptomatic and fever-free without medications, it's okay to end your isolation 
as long as you continue to wear masks. And I'll say this, um, limit to essential activities only. This is not the time to visit your elderly grandmother or go to a large gathering where you could potentially expose vulnerable immunocompromised um, people to this virus. If you need to do something essential and you're asymptomatic at that point, it's okay to end the isolation, but continue masking. Of course, if you have uh, symptoms still extend that to day 10. Now there is good research out of Boston that shows that most people are no longer shedding virus beyond day eight. So day 10, you're unlikely to infect others. These guidelines are under review um, by the CDC and we may see a change sooner um, rather than later because of how infectious these newer strains are. Um, so more to come on that, but you know, if you have any questions that I always say based on your own specific health concerns or when it comes to your own social situation, it's best to talk to your medical provider on what to do. All right. Thank you so much. As we continue to follow all these updates with the coronavirus, always good information to have. Thank you so much for having me.